Hey, what's up everyone? Jeremy, aka Wild Child Inc. here, and I am back with my G35. And as you can see right here, it's fully converted to a manual swap transmission, and it's got a new engine, so stay tuned and enjoy the video. The car has held up really well these past five years. It's around 125,000 miles now, which is still relatively young for a 06 model, but there's a lot more life left in this car, and I've had not had any problems since. I think the G35 is done for. I was driving home from just getting dinner for my family, and I heard knocking from my car, and you can vaguely hear it right now knocking. You could kind of hear the knocking a little bit and uh, the stuff on the gas accelerator, it kind of gets worse. So yeah, I don't know whether or not it's actual rod knock or if it's the timing chain or whatever, it just doesn't sound good. Uh, I honestly don't know what to say. I haven't been sending the car lately at all, I've just been daily driving it. Um, oil's good, check the oil. The car's mileage is still around 140 or I don't know, you can see for sure when I uh, press the gas if you rewind the video, but yeah, I'm just like shit out of luck. We'll see what happens with the car. I actually just got it back from being in a rear end accident, which happened last month. I got it repaired and everything. Uh, the car was running fine. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a really long time since I last made a video in regards to the G35. It's been about five, six, six plus months, let's say, and I'm glad to say that it's back. It's back healthy more than it ever was before. Um, uh, as you can see by the, the title of the video, it's now a manual swap G35. Now, this was a huge, huge project that my friends um, Angel and Rudy took part of. They're the one, they're the shop at RTA that uh, pretty much did the whole resourcing of the parts and basically building this car back to what it is now and you know I have a huge huge thank you for them I couldn't have done this project without them like I know there's a lot of people that like to do DIY engine swaps manual transition swaps but I'm not a mechanic I'm not somebody inclined to uh, kind of learn that kind of stuff I'm more on the suspension side the more basic stuff like for for real things like I wanted to have this be close to OEM as possible and that I couldn't have done that without uh, Rudy and Angel doing this project so with that, it is a fully swapped G35 manual. Um, the transmission came out of a 2005 or 2006 350Z. And as you know, that I did, uh, on top of manual swapping this, I did have to get a new engine. And um, what it is, is basically a used JDM motor from Japan. What they do is, they, Japan has a law where um, cars that are over 40 or 50,000 miles, like they get taxed and a lot of the owners of cars, they don't like to uh, pay the extra tax once their cars hit that mileage and what happens is they sell them those cars off and some of them end up getting parted out and those parts get sent overseas and that's one of these motors is a VQ35DE straight from Japan. It it's, uh, came out of 2006 350Z automatic so um, you know I basically brought back the time of this car like it, I had it for six years you know those who have been uh, with me since the beginning when I transitioned to my channel to cars I know that I've been with this car for that long and um, basically all the transmission the engine parts are gone back in time to about five six years and have less mileage than the ones that I had and I still own the blown motor and the automatic transmission 
So if anybody's interested, uh, I'll have a link in the description on how to contact me for that. But other than that, if I don't get those sold, it might be a possibility that that will become a built motor in the future. But that's not anytime soon. Anyways, let's get down to the details of this car. All right, so let's get down to the details on this car. Uh, like I said, it came out of a 2005 350Z. This is a or this is a VQ35 DE from Japan. Like I said, it has a low mileage motor. Um, it actually has maybe around 50,000 miles, and that's actually lower than what I originally got my car at. I originally got my car around 62,000 miles, about, and that was six years ago. So this is, you know, give or take that. It doesn't, you know, become a typical VQ or one out of 10 VQs. You know. Hopefully this one will last me a lot longer and seems pretty healthy right now, obviously because it's a low mileage motor and I'm definitely going to be reinforcing uh, the oil consumption issues again. Uh, this one in particular is probably going to get an oil catch can, oil cooler, all that stuff, especially if I wanted to go to track more often because uh, it's just nice to have a bigger oil cooler on track. That way all the temperatures are um, normalized and you know it's not overworking the system. Anyways. So Rudy kind of went the extra mile and kind of played along with the joke I had here. Um, I had put a Nissan emblem on here because I was actually in a brake check incident. Well, not necessarily directly me, but the person in front of me got brake checked by somebody else. And unfortunately, my my uh, grill got hooked onto their, I don't know, their hook or something, and it was yanked out. And that, I thought that there was no, you know, initially I thought there wasn't a lot of damage, but... Um, there, tip, there wasn't any damage, but the badge was pulled out and pretty much ran over by anybody behind me. So I tried to look for an Infinity replacement, but unfortunately those are kind of expensive, so I just found like a Nissan one just for the hell of it. And I just put that there just as a placeholder. Anyways, Rudy went out of his way to find a Nissan Skyline V35 uh, cover just to kind of match the theme, you know, as, as he was importing things from Japan. And uh, you know, it's a nice little touch. Uh, Rudy did a lot of research and work to, into this car. You know, he wanted it close to OEM spec, and I also wanted to because it's still going to be my daily driver. And I know a lot of people who DIY the engine swaps; they end up with uh, light issues on the dashboard. This is still my automatic dashboard, and the only lights that pop up are the automatic check light, and that's because I don't have an automatic transmission anymore. So the automatic sensor is gone and um, the only other lights are my VDC and slip lights which I always have on because I disabled my traction control. Other than that the car was programmed by um, one of his acquaintances to run uh, normally and you know he, he said the hardest part of doing this was resourcing the actual parts and finding reliable sources that would provide quality uh, parts for the car and they were able to source the transmission the engine um, it took a while that was the hardest part is that it took a while and once they had everything they were able to get it all together plug and play and that's what his purpose was is to do a plug and play because he's he's not a fabricator but he is a very good mechanic when it comes to just bringing things back to uh, stock or uh, lightly modifying basically and you know I can't thank him enough for going out of his way him and Angel going out of their way to really work on this major project I had on this car to do the engine swap to do the transmission swap so that's enough with the engine. Now that you know it's a low mileage engine, let's go take a look inside and see the new interior with the manual transmission. All right, so let's talk about the interior now. As you can see right here, this is the shifter. Uh, so basically what they had to do was get the center console from a manual version of the G35 sedan specifically just so it fits properly. And also, you know, putting the transmission, the sizes are different on the automatic and, and manual. So they did have to cut some metal down here under the underneath the panel in order to get the e-brake to fit and other than that they were able to kind of fabricate uh, a clean kind of tunnel so that everything fit properly and snug and aside from that I don't have a foot brake anymore because the the e-brakes are completely different between the automatic and the manual so the manual one has a shorter link and you can't use the same pedals um, what was a surprise to us is that we can't use the same pedals uh, as the automatic because the way that they're located the positions that they're in are specific for a manual and automatic and they basically got me a new set of pedals for the clutch brake and gas and that's a lot of the you know sourcing that went into this car is you know getting the proper parts to make it work you know right down to the wire harness that came from a manual transmission car and uh, pretty much everything in terms of drivetrain wise is it does have, a, like I said, it is a manual transmission from a 350Z. They also went ahead and got me the drive shaft out of a 350Z 
and uh, a VLSD uh, for the proper gear ratio out of a manual G35. Now, the VLSD is gonna be more advantageous for me because I was running an open diff and you know me, I already planned to get a clutch type LSD and it's good that I now have a VLSD because I did need that pumpkin anyways in order to buy the LSD that I wanted because it's um, there's something about the gear ratio, the positioning of them inside the actual LSD itself that makes it kind of difficult when you buy aftermarket LSDs for the car. So that's something else to look forward to in a future video in regards to LSD, but that's pretty much the drive thing is that we had to get a new transmission, new drive shaft, new pedals, brake, and diff in the back. So, you know, Angel and Rudy did, like I said, I can't thank them enough. They did an amazing job on this car, uh, bringing it back to basically kind of factory spec in a way. And um, also this is this cover right here is actually provided by our friend um, Sean. Um, Such Sean as he, as he goes by on Instagram. I'll link you his company who does they do custom like shift um, boots and stuff like that and then this shifter knob was actually my brother's who's holding the camera right now he got tired of this uh, sh his shift this being in his car so he wanted the sh my short shift knob that came here and I was like okay whatever anyway so that's the small interior stuff so now that you guys know how the car is built and what went through it um, let's go drive it and I'll give you a rundown on my experience on learning this car and uh, yeah Alright everybody, now we're back here in the car actually driving it as you can see right here. And I forgot to mention during the breakdown process that um, this car actually has a stage 3 clutch and a light and flywheel now. So um, you'll see in the rest of the video or I, I'll, depending on where I put it in the video, you'll see where I first got the car and I was very, I was really struggling. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm not gonna get used to that. stage clutch it's pretty damn aggressive there's it's either it's on or it's off and uh, you know I'm used to OEM clutches where there's a little bit more leeway in terms of me getting the catch point whereas this one it's like you know you're on you're off and there's no there's very minimal in between so it took a while to get used to it uh, I've had the car now for about a week so I'm pretty used to it now I there are still moments where I'm still struggling uphill to get the to get the first gear in just cause like like that the like I said the point of, of doing it or the catch point is very um, close so it just takes a bit but after a while honestly like you know other other than that it's fine and now that I'm talking about the manual transmission conversion it feels great you know the car feels especially with the flight light and flywheel and the clutch like it's super easy to heel toe it's um, very responsive the the rev just match making it like you know god mode if, in terms of you know if you're if you're gonna be road racing and going rolling through the gears downshifting all that stuff it makes it super easy and um, you know other than that it's the same car that I built the suspension everything still feels the same uh, the settings haven't changed since the breakdown and pretty much you know I get why people still kind of say that they feel having more fun with the manual, but honestly, from my perspective, I still don't get that same difference because for me, I was still driving the car in automatic with the Tiptronic mode. It's just now I'm able to shift through the gears a little bit faster, get it to the points that I want it to be. And um, yeah, it just, it's just, other than that, it feels basically the same. Like the joy, I was already having fun driving the car with the setup I had, even if it was automatic, you know? Like I said a lot, many times on this channel, like. The, the fun part for me of driving is just, you know, the overall experience of just going hard and testing your skill as a driver, playing the, playing the vehicle as if it's an instrument, you know, kind of like my guitar videos, you know, I, I shred the guitar, like, now I'm just, you know, shredding a different instrument, I'm shredding the, the tires on the car and things like that. 
And, uh, you know, like I said, I do understand why people feel like the need for manual is still fun, but for me personally, there's not much of a difference in terms of manual automatic. Like, I still drove the car hard as hell, you know, and that's just honestly how I feel about it, but, you know, that's just my perspective, and everybody has a different perspective, and, you know, we're gonna go to the back road here a bit, and I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys um, the capabilities of this car ever since I changed it to manual, so... Uh, we're gonna transition to that now. So, hey everybody, we're back here in the back road and I'm gonna show you real quick how the flywheel and does. Obviously, so I wanted like easy mode on me, right? But you know, as I got used to it, it's actually not that bad. So with that, you know, this is the pretty much the overview of the car. So you guys are gonna look, you guys are gonna see me doing a lot more track days on this thing. Um, you know, obviously once this COVID-19 stuff goes down, so you know, I'll see you guys in future videos. Obviously, I have a lot of stuff planned for this car. This. This thing went over, is going over a major overhaul. So look forward to the wheels that I'm getting for this car. The I'm also getting the, like I said, the clutch type LSD. And this car's gonna be set, you know, uh, other, apart from regular maintenance. So yeah, I think that's pretty much a wrap for this video. Every I hope everybody stays safe. You know, during this quarantine and shutdown, we're all gonna be back at it soon. We're all gonna be back on the track, chilling again, uh, shredding mountains and whatnot. So. Until that time, I'll catch you in the next one.